a spotlight effect. What is that? And more importantly, how does it affect your surfskate progress? Well, I will explain all of this to you in today's video. Hi everyone, my name is Chris. I'm a passionate skater, surfer, surf skater, finally a med student and future psychiatrist. And since the weather in January in Germany is all messed up anyways and I can't really go skating, I thought I started this series about how your mind is holding back your skate progress, explaining different concepts and psychological models and their relation and effect on a performance sport such as skating, surfing or surf skating. Starting this series with today's topic, the spotlight effect which greatly ties into the concept of social anxiety. So to kick this off, we first need to explain what is the spotlight effect. Quiet now class, the young man in the back. Please no eating while class, pay attention. Oh, excuse me professor. Well, the spotlight effect is a psychological model describing how every person, each and every one of us, always perceives their world as if they were in the spotlight. We all always think we are the main character and all the attention only lies on us, no matter what we do, no matter where we go. More correctly, this concept would be called egocentric bias. If you don't know what a bias is, I encourage you to Google it, but basically there are multiple different biases out there. In an easy way, you can say a bias is always something that affects the way you think about something or the way you perceive something. As I just said, there's a lot of different biases but this, the spotlight effect, also called the egocentric bias. Now let me give you an example of what the spotlight effect is. So now let's imagine you go out of the house in the morning and your hair isn't done at all. It looks really, really bad, completely messed up. Because of the spotlight effect, you go out into the world and you think most people around you notice your bad hair and they think about you in a bad way, thus inducing social anxiety because you think all these people are judging you for your bad hair day. When in fact, nobody really notices, and even if they do notice, they are more likely to not care at all. But you think the spotlight is on you, like you're on a stage, everybody is looking at you, all the attention is on you, so naturally you think everybody else notices as well and is judging you because of that. Now to offer the perspective of the outsider looking in, let me ask you the simple question. When was the last time you walked across the street you saw somebody with really bad hair and spent more than a few seconds thinking about that. I bet you might not even recall a single time in the last week. And that is of course because we are also thinking we are in the spotlight. We don't care about whoever's walking in the streets around us. As cynical as that sounds, we all just care about ourselves. So if you still don't believe me, let me back that up with a study and you can find that in the links down below of course. There was a study done quite some years ago with students and they were all put into a room. Some of them were made to wear a very embarrassing t-shirt. All these students spent time together in the room doing different tasks and at the end, the ones wearing the embarrassing t-shirts were asked how many other people they thought noticed that embarrassing t-shirt. Now get this, they actually thought that 50% of the people in the room noticed that they were wearing an embarrassing t-shirt. When in actuality, all the other students were asked and as little as 10% actually noticed that somebody was wearing an embarrassing or funny t-shirt. So as you can see by that study that shows the egocentric bias or spotlight effect, we always think all the attention is on us and people judge about the things that we do, even if it's just an awkward, funny or embarrassing t-shirt, but very little people actually see it and even less care or think about it. So I guess by now everybody has understood what the spotlight effect is. But now, how does it affect you? Well, it greatly induces social anxiety. If you don't know what social anxiety is, good for you, but basically social anxiety means you feel judged, you feel people are looking at you, you think you are being weird, and people think you are being weird, and all of that holds yourself back. We all know that surfing, skating, and surf skating are sports where the mind and your psychological state is very much a contributor. And even the smallest amount of social anxiety or thinking people judge on whatever you do takes away from that freedom that you need to get in a flow state and really work on your performance and work on your skills. So with the spotlight effect in place, you thinking they are judging you, that's creating social anxiety in yourself. You create a hindrance in your mind that keeps you from performing. Sorry for interrupting the video in that way, but if you find value in my videos and in the content I put out, it would really help me as a creator if you went to my buy me a coffee page and supported me with the equivalent amount of buying me a coffee. If you don't want to do that, that's fine at all. I'm very grateful that you're here watching. Please just leave a like and or a comment 
And let's get back to the video. Now that we understood and talked about the concept in general, let me bring up some real life examples of how it applies to our sport. I want to give a very broad and very different scenarios for each and every one of this audience with different levels of performance, with different age groups. And I want to try and give each and every one of you one example that you feel that you can identify with. Go to the timestamps and chapters provided and skip the ones that you don't want to see and be able to find the ones that interest you the most. The very first example I want to bring up is being an absolute beginner. You go to a skate park, maybe even you found yourself in a spot where you don't go to a skate park at all, or you are in the streets and there are a lot of people walking by your practice area and they look at you because you're doing something interesting. But the spotlight effect kicks in and you think they judge you, they think you look funny, but I can guarantee you, again, you're falling victim to the spotlight effect to your egocentric bias, most likely they only look at you because it's interesting what you're doing. Let's face it, surf skating is an interesting sport. Why wouldn't you look at this? It might just like create that little hindrance in your mind that you can't really do everything that you want to do freely. So it keeps on holding you back, but it really shouldn't because as we know now, that's only the egocentric bias that you've fallen victim to. So get this out of your head and keep on practicing. And then especially for beginners, every single skater, surfer, surf skater ever all started at zero and nobody ever judges a beginner who's really out there grinding it out and trying to get better. Now when you see an absolute beginner, do you judge them? Do you make fun of them? I bet you don't. Now one example that's maybe more applicable to some of the older audience, wearing protective gear. Wearing protective gear is something super smart to do. It can reduce the stress and the anxiety that comes with thinking about hurting yourself. So it actually frees your mind up to do things more freely. But spotlight effect kicks in social anxiety kicks in, most of the people aren't wearing protective gear, so you are the odd man out, and you think people are making fun of you because you are protecting yourself. You might think people are thinking about you are being a pussy, or you're just being an old man that needs to protect himself, but that's completely wrong. Let me just ask you this again for reflective purposes. When was the last time you saw anyone wearing protective gear and thought about them, what a pussy? Well, I can't recall a single time that I've done that, and yeah, I just don't think that's common. And still, we are falling victim to that egocentric bias. Maybe we have our own problems with wearing protective gear. We think it's not cool or it's not hardcore or whatever, but that's just within ourselves. But nonetheless, it creates that social anxiety that keeps us holding back from all of the things that we want to do. Either in a way where we don't go to that skate park because we think we're being judged, or we don't wear the protective gear, missing out on the things that we want to try next. Put on all that you need, feel safe, and don't think about what everybody else is thinking about you, because most likely they don't think about you at all. And then the very last example that I want to give to you is simply being old. Now, that being said, it doesn't matter what you perceive as old. You might be 50, 60 plus, since there are so many young skaters in their teens and 20s, super young scooter kids, so no matter where you go, even at 28, you might be the oldest person in a skate park. Now when you're 50, 60 and plus, you might very well always be the oldest person in a skate park. But I don't think there's any single person out there judging you because of that. If I see somebody of that age trying something new, I look at that person and I feel like, dang, I hope when I reach that age, I will still have the motivation and all it needs to go out and try something new and work on myself. So if that is you, think again, you might be falling victim to the ecocentric bias, the spotlight effect. Don't let yourself be held back. Now that you know that concept, get out of it and get freely after your practice. Okay, so now that I have introduced and explained that concept to you and given you quite some different examples and scenarios of what that might look like, let's talk about how we can actually tackle that social anxiety that the spotlight effect induces and keep on going freely after a practice without having that social anxiety. Well, all these processes that need to lead of you reducing your own anxieties and fears and whatever you want to call it is a cognitive process. So a cognitive process means it needs to happen inside your head. It should already greatly help you to know the concept of the spotlight effect because the next time you're going out you might not be able to save yourself from feeling that social anxiety arise, but right at that moment, you should stop, take a breather, recall into your head, wait, I've seen this YouTube video, this future psychiatrist, Chris Guy, talk about the concept of the spotlight effect, the 
egocentric bias. Am I in some way, form or kind just now falling victim to the bias? More likely than not, the answer to that question is yes. And that should be the first step of like putting that barrier in before that anxiety gets too high and telling yourself there is nothing to worry about because all of these people for whatever reason aren't noticing you at all or they don't care at all because they're occupied with their own spotlight. <laughs> this should be the process that you take on going forward. To recap that process, it should go like this. You go out skating, you feel social anxiety arising, you then notice, no, 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 I won't feel this anxiety today. I won't feel those fears today because I know of that concept of the egocentric bias, the spotlight effect. This is only me telling myself that I'm being judged right now when in fact I'm not being judged at all. That stops or breaks the loop of that anxiety and you can keep on freely practicing without being worried at all. Well, I hope that whatever you learned today about that concept of the spotlight effect helped you understand why at times you feel fear, you feel social anxiety and it will help you kick it in the ass the next time it arises before it gets too big. I want to take this concept, how your mind is holding back your skate progress and take it further. I have a lot of ideas already of the next concepts and things I want to talk about but if there's something that you know, even if you can't name it, something where you really feel it is your mind that's holding you back, please put it in the comments down below and I will try to address this in a later video of this series. If you have any other question, also go down to the comments below and let me know and I will get to every single one of you and try and answer your questions as good as I can. If you liked today's video, it will really go a long way for me if you left that thumbs up, left a comment and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to go all the way in, ring that bell for notifications so you won't miss the next video. But for now, wherever you might be out there in the big wide world, I hope you are having a great day and I will see you back here next week. Goodbye.